I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Simon Jones, CEO and co-founder of Volts. Simon, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. No, it's super nice to be here. Likewise, let's dive straight into it. I'd love to just kick off our conversation for the audience uh, by allowing you the time to talk a little bit about Volts, uh, some of the solutions that you're driving uh, in the blockchain space, and then we'll dive into those details. Yeah, sure. So at Volts, we're building out a protocol that effectively brings interest rate swaps to DeFi. Um, and I guess just to talk to kind of like the significance of that, interest rate swaps, they're just a core pillar of any well-functioning financial system. Um, so the kind of like headline there really is that without interest rate swaps in DeFi, DeFi will never be able to serve the financial needs of the whole of the world. Um, so we, we need this to exist in order for DeFi and for all of us to kind of deliver on our vision of making DeFi a global financial system. Um, and I guess just to add some color to that, so in traditional, if, if we look to traditional finance as an example, right, um, in traditional finance, there is a quadrillion, so literally with a Q, there's a quadrillion of notional exchanged each year, uh, which is almost like a cartoonishly large number, but it's that large because it supports such a kind of wide variety of different use cases. So be that uh, from speculation to risk management, through to the construction of structured products. So whilst interest rate swaps itself might feel a bit dry and it might feel like something that you as a consumer have never actually interacted with, if you've ever had a fixed rate savings account or a fixed rate mortgage, what's actually happening in the background is that's being packaged up off the back of an interest rate swap. So for us to be able to create these products and serve the financial needs of the whole world through DeFi, we need interest rate swaps to exist. I completely agree. and. Um, you know, I've, I've studied it in, in finance as well, but I feel like there's a lot of people that have just gotten into cryptocurrency, uh, you know, as their first uh, venture into investing and they, you know, they're starting to stake some of their coins and they see that they're getting interest on them. Um, and, but they probably don't fully understand interest rate swaps. <laughs> and uh, yeah. maybe you can explain a little bit more about the, the swap part and, and how that's sort of playing a role in, in crypto and why that's different from people just staking and earning interest. Yeah, sure. So, so in terms of our AMM, um, there's basically three different kind of like agents that exist within that. You obviously have liquidity providers, um, which functions well. There's definitely some differences to other AMMs, but you kind of we put that to one, to one side. Then, in terms of trading, um, you have what we describe as fixed takers, where you are swapping and essentially selling away a variable rate of return in exchange for a fixed rates. So if you, for example, your own C die gives off a variable rate, you don't want the variable, you can sell that rate in mm -hmm. and receive a fixed rate back. Or on the other side, we have what's described as variable take, it's where you're effectively doing the opposite. So you sell a fixed rate in and you receive a variable rate back. And in both instances, you can trade that with uh, kind of leverage, uh, just given the construction of the AMM that we've designed, uh, which basically means that, say, if you're on the variable taker side and you believe kind of the variable rate will be higher through the course of the kind of pool's term than the fixed rate that you're selling, you can trade that delta with leverage. Great explanation and thank you for that, Simon. Now I'm curious, do you have a history in, in blockchain or in finance or, or how did you come about creating Volts? Yeah, so I mean, for, for what it's worth, I was never actually supposed to be in finance. I had got into university to study architecture and um, uh, like as a kind of relatively young man, I, I remember just this, this period of time where I couldn't get a job. And it wasn't because I hadn't had any kind of experience and I had loads of experience on jobs. It was actually because we're in the middle of the global financial crisis. And looking back, that clearly had some sort of impact because I switched from architecture to economics and then coming out of university, I actually went on to set, uh, set up three different kind of financial technology companies using that in as broad as possible sense. So got introduced to crypto uh, in 2012, but it was just too early then really to kind of use the technology to build products and services for users. Um, so the first two were kind of like more kind of traditional financial technology, fintech businesses. Uh, with one of those, we built the very first uh, kind of fully automated human financial advisor. So we effectively fully automated what a human financial advisor's brain effectively did. Uh, but then coming into last year, like having kind of being exposed very early um, to kind of crypto is always been this like itch that I just had to scratch. 
Um, and it's very clear the technology, in my mind, is just ready for like mass market adoption. Um, so that's when I set out to find my co-founder. Um, he's called Arta. I often describe him as a ninja. Um, he's got a master's in statistical science from Oxford. Uh, he's been a quant at Bank of America, and he's been a machine learning engineer at Amazon. So he's got a great blend of uh, kind of math plus finance plus tech. And he and I then set out on a kind of six-month research piece uh, to really unlock what we felt was going to be the next zero to one innovation that was required to move the whole sector forward. Mm, very interesting. And thanks for that background. Now, interest rate swaps are normally, you know, from the tra traditional financial world, as you said. I'm curious if implementing it into the cryptocurrency world, are you still targeting you know, traditional finance uh, investors and, and traders and, and showing them? the cryptocurrency side of it or are you also targeting you know people that aren't from tradfi and they're just for crypto now bringing them new kind of financial products or is it both it, it's, it's it's a combination of both but it's certainly for, for the most part at the moment more lean towards people who are kind of like web3 native um and kind of really the way that we think about vaults is that we're a super low level piece of infrastructure um so we expect lots of teams and this is already happening we expect lots of teams to build on top of vaults protocol uh, to use what is essentially like a new market um, to construct a whole bunch of new products, which otherwise weren't possible. Um, so that can range from stuff which at, at kind of one end of the spectrum is like a fixed rate savings account, um, all the way to kind of like the other end of the spectrum where we've actually had teams reach out who are trying to do stuff like fixed rate mortgages on chain. And, um, you know, from our perspective, yes, there's going to be traders and we speak to traders and institutions all the time, but we also work very closely with lots of other builders in this space as they look to build new products and services that sit on top of vaults. Mm -hmm. That's great. And, and yeah, I feel like, you know, when DeFi uh, first exploded in, in DeFi summer, um, it's been a, over, over a year or two now <laughs> almost, um, it was like such a significant uh, impact in blockchain. It just drove so much more capital and so much more interest from the financial world into, into blockchain. And how important do you see, you know, interest rate rate swaps as being, you know, the next big thing that's going to help uh, DeFi and blockchain grow? Yeah, I think it will act as like the the catalyst for a whole bunch of new products in this space. Um, so we kind of had, if you think about it in waves, you kind of had like your kind of really important uh, kind of uh, money markets and, and kind of dexes, which which kind of need to exist and always going to be like the first wave of innovation in this space. Um, but with the advent of interest rate swaps and the ability to kind of like trade rates and use that as a way of structuring it into new products and services, uh, we expect that to trigger, uh, like I'm saying, this, this wave of new products that are built such that DeFi can start to serve the financial needs of the whole of the world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I haven't heard of any other you know, DeFi projects working on interest rate swaps yet. Um, is it something that is new to the industry um, or is there uh, you know, a rush of competition coming up in this area as well? Yeah, it's pretty new. We, we kind of did our, uh, well, we did a seed round at the back end of last year. And at that point in time, I'm pretty sure that we were, we, we were kind of one of the first, if not the first in this space. Um, since then, there, there, are, there are people popping up. It's like, it's, it's clearly going to be a massive market. It's incredibly important for DeFi to continue to grow. Um, but we don't really think about it as like competitors for what it's worth. You, you know, we, we need other people trying other ideas in the space. Um, off the back of that, it actually forces more innovation and ultimately helps us all move forwards. Definitely. And I agree, especially at this early, early stage. Um, the more awareness to these kind of products, the better, I believe. Um, yeah. And, and, and speaking at early stage, you, you just mentioned there your, your, your seed funding um, not, not too long ago. I'm curious where the protocol is at at this stage, you know, in terms of functioning and, and usability. Yeah, so we we did we did the seed round back end of last year. Um, for what it's worth, at the time, uh, just given the complexity of actually building out an automated market maker for interest rate swaps, it's super complicated. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a whole bunch of like design decisions within that are, um, but we, which just unlock new things for the space as well. Like even the separation of the AMM relative to the margin engine, such that people can trade with leverage. Um, but given the complexity, everyone said it was going to take six months for us to basically build it and get it audited. Uh, we did it in three. Um, and what that means is that we have now got it onto testnet um, and we're steadily ramping up towards our mainnet launch. Hmm. That's great to hear. And 
you know, DeFi and investing in general obviously has risks as well. One of the ones that come to mind with DeFi is impermanent loss. Maybe you can talk about that and also any other risks involved with interest rate swaps in DeFi as well. Yeah, so what's super interesting actually is that um, we have essentially removed the concept of impermanent loss from uh, kind of uh, kind of the vaults AMM. And the reason for that is that if you think about like a normal AMM where you say have DAI and ETH, um, you know, and as basically as the price moves, there's a risk that you kind of end up crystallizing your loss if that moves you kind of against what you, you want to have. Um, uh, but with an interest rate swap AMM, what you actually have on one side is you have fixed takers who are receiving fixed rates of return. And on the other, you're having variable takers who are receiving variable rates of return. And that's created on top of an asset like CDI. But because it's on top of an asset like CDI, your fixed rate payments there are in DAI and your variable rate payments there are also in DAI. So as an LP, you only have to deposit one asset in order to create either side of the market, at which point you don't have the risk of impermanent loss. There are other risks. Um, we describe it as fund rate, funding rate risk, uh, where you can basically get locked into a swap uh, where you're supporting someone else's trade. Uh, but the concept of impermanent loss has been removed from the vaults AMM. Mm. That's great to hear because I feel like a lot of people, especially ones that don't fully understand impermanent loss, don't really know what they're getting into when they um, add liquidity into you know, these liquidity providers on the AMMs. And often the variable rates uh, can fluctuate quite highly, you know, especially when there's a new DeFi product that uh, touts uh, a high interest rate to, to start. You know, the APYs can be in the hundreds or thousands of percent, and it seems a little crazy, and they often go down right away. I'm curious with yeah. uh, interest rate swaps, you know, with the variable rates that you talk about, you know, swapping for something fixed, um, are you seeing or will we see the variable rates be very volatile like we've seen in early stage DeFi products? Well, so we, it depends where we create the, so we can try, create a pool on top of any asset with a variable rate of return. And in fact, actually, the vaults market is entirely synthetic. So the, 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 all we need is an oracle feed coming in and, and we built on-chain rate oracles to ensure it remains composable and fully decentralized. But so long as there's a rate oracle coming in, we can create a pool on any asset with a variable rate of return. Um, so kind of some of the early kind of, uh, kind of projects where you get these kind of really high APYs, um, yes, we could build pools on top of that. Uh, but actually, to begin with, we're kind of more likely to lean towards uh, kind of uh, kind of your more traditional markets, mm -hmm. traditional, um, uh, you know, where there's just greater volume, greater demand for interest rate swaps. Definitely. Yeah, and I agree. That's probably the safer way to go about it, especially at early stages. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. And, you know, speaking on, about how that does play out, maybe we can talk a little bit about the future of Volts. Uh, you mentioned that you've, you've already ahead of schedule in, in building out the test net and everything with the rest of 2022 you know what are some of the plans for the roadmap and continuing to develop yeah so i, I guess the long i come back to this kind of like long-term vision which is that we're building out vaults because we want DeFi to become the financial system for the whole of the world mm -hmm. um so the really really long term is that that quadrillion that i talk about in traditional finance we want all of that to exist on vaults protocol right and and actually if you project into the future like what why why should it continue to go through uh, centralized entities which are using legacy technology and legacy ways of working. It just shouldn't happen. Um, and we expect a lot of that to move across to blockchain-based infrastructure. And for us, as a kind of as a project, we obviously want all of that trading activity to go through vaults. Uh, and if we're doing that, then actually what that means is it means that DeFi is becoming the financial system for the whole of the world. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, but in terms of like the shorter term, um, uh, you know, uh, kind of all we're focused on right now as a team is, is moving from this test net phase um, into kind of mainnet. Um, and from that point, it's about kind of just growing uh, kind of within DeFi and then, and then ultimately kind of starting to bring uh, kind of all of that market across into the infrastructure we're creating. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. And yeah, that's pretty ambitious. Uh, I would love for the you know, quadrillions of derivatives in the stock market to fully be tokenized onto DeFi and, you know, to have all of these great innovative uh solutions to be the yeah. norm so let, let's well, let's let's hope for that yeah one thing i sometimes say i'm based in london so one thing i sometimes say to like the team is london clearinghouse it is literally like based over there right london clearinghouse is responsible for about 90 percent of the world's interest rate swap clearing and within five years we don't want it to exist as an entity mm -hmm. and if it hasn't exist if it no longer exists as an entity then that's basically us doing our job right 
Very cool. And, you know, from the, the, the last two years, we've seen, uh, you know, the exponential growth in DeFi. Do you see that same trend continuing uh, with the introduction of cool financial products like interest rate swaps and, and others? You know, how quickly do you think DeFi will escalate to replace these old technologies? Yeah, I think I think what's happening right now is DeFi is really getting to this point where it's no longer this like weird kind of you know kind of environment which um, kind of you know Chad is like oh we don't really need to pay attention to that. Um, it's it's getting to the point where kind of everybody uh, kind of all, all across the world uh, is is really starting to become aware of this system uh, and the potential benefits that it can provide. So I I personally like the, kind of when things are on an exponential growth curve, the, I personally believe that they're going to happen a lot quicker than. Um, perhaps other people expect. Um, so, you know, I, I genuinely think it's possible in the next five years for a lot of this kind of uh, kind of trading activity to move across on blockchain-based infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm looking forward to to seeing that happen, Simon. And now for the viewers that are looking to learn more about interest rate swaps on, on DeFi and just up vaults and, and follow along with the road to the mainnet launch as well, what is the best way for them to learn more and to stay involved? Yeah, sure. So you can follow us on Twitter. It's uh, Z underscore XYZ. Um, or you can go to the website, vaults.xyz. Um, and there's a bunch of information which you'll find there. Um, but alongside that, I would really encourage people to come through and uh, kind of come into the Discord, engage with the community. Uh, we host AMAs pretty regularly. There's teams, obviously, that are building on us. We just yesterday had two teams presenting to the community kind of some things which they hacked together at a recent hackathon. Um, it's a really great place to be. Awesome. I will leave those links as well in the description box below. Uh, all the best with everything in interest rate swaps and volts moving forward, Simon, and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Great to talk to you.